Are you looking for a slyly oddball fish that's easy to care for and easy on the wallet? Keep watching as I talk about coolie loaches, their care requirements and personality, and whether or not I think they're worth it or not. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven tips for busy fish keepers like you. And back in the day, coolie loaches were definitely on my bucket list of fish to keep. I mean, they're so small and snake-like with the little zebra patterns, like what's not to love? Well, I heard they're nocturnal and super shy, so I really avoided them for a long time. Luckily, I was able to set up, set up a shy guy's jungle tank where I was deliberately looking for super timid fish. And once I got them, I seriously now think they're the coolest beginner oddball fish there is out there. Pangeo coolie is one of the most popular and readily available species out of all the loaches that might be referred to as coolie loaches. Um, they are typically look like a small little eel or snake uh, that has beady little black eyes, alternating bands of light tan and dark brown and kind of pinkish cheeks with three pairs of barbels around their mouth. They can grow to be about four inches long or 10 centimeters. And because their bodies are so slender, I would almost say they have less mass and therefore bio load compared to like a betta fish, for example. They can live up to 10 years long, supposedly, and are relatively cheap. I'd say maybe $3 per fish is what I got them for. So let's talk about tank setup. So in the wild, they come from shallow, slow moving forest streams in Southeast Asia. So we're talking lots of shade, dense vegetation, and probably lots of leaf litter and a muddy substrate. In general, the water seems to be pretty soft with a low pH, but I have a pH of 8.0 and they seem to be doing okay. The internet seems pretty divided on the temperature range, whether it's on the cooler or warmer side of a typical tropical aquarium setup. So I'm gonna play it safe and say 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 to 27 degrees Celsius. In terms of tank size, I'd go with a minimum of 20 gallons for a school of six. They don't school per se, uh, but they definitely feel a lot more comfortable and safety in numbers when there's more of them. For example, if you just get one coli loach, you'll probably never see it. You definitely want to provide more plants and hiding spots for them to have cover under because as the adage goes with shy fish, it seems like the more hiding spots you provide, the more out and about invisible they are. A lot of people like to add catapa leaves and other tannin botanicals to simulate their environment at home. Several online articles said that you definitely need to uh, have a lid for your aquarium and provide a pre-filter intake sponge uh, to cover any openings because they can be escape artists. And I think that might be true because I definitely see them crawling around between uh, little plant roots and my Anubias and really any small crevice that they can fit their heads into. And finally, I keep mine on sand substrate just because I think it provides more enrichment for them to dig around for food in, but you can probably put them on any kind of smooth substrate. All right, let's talk about food. So in the wild, these are omnivorous bottom dwellers that are scavenging around on the bottom of the riverbed, using their barbels to look for I'd say bug larvae, small crustaceans, and any kind of plant matter that happens to enter their mouths. So at home, I like to feed them small sinking foods or anything soft enough that's easy for them to readily break off. Uh, they'll pretty much eat anything. They are not picky, but I'd say their favorite foods would be fluval bug bites. I feed them aquarium co-ops, easy fry food. They'll eat any kind of frozen foods or rapashi gel foods. And they also like the occasional vegetable like um, zucchini squash or canned green beans. I did try to feed them Hakari sinking wafers, which my Corridoras really loved, but they don't really take to it for some reason. Because coolie loaches are so peaceful themselves, they can pretty much live with any tank mate that is also a peaceful community fish. So things that won't eat them, won't pick on them, and won't steal all of their food. So things like maybe um, Rasporas, Tetras, maybe even Corridoras, even though they're both bottom dwellers. In my Shy Guys tank, I keep them with Celestial Paldanios, a Peacock Gudgeon, and then most recently, my Betta fish. So the Celestial Pearl Danios and the Peacock Gudgeon swim more in the middle layer of the tank 
and they really never interact at all. Oh, but the auto sinkless catfish I have there, uh, they do both enjoy vegetables. So it's actually hilarious to try to see two super peaceful fish try to eat the same thing because they're like, oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. And they'll like gently take turns nudging each other off the cucumber, which is really adorable. Nothing aggressive at all. However, the betta fish I added most recently, Soundwave, he is very, um, I would say possessive over food. So I've just learned to sprinkle multiple pockets of food throughout the entire aquarium and there's not a problem. So is the coolie loach worth it? Absolutely yes. So here's the thing, when you go to the fish store, you're gonna see them all crowded and hiding under the sponge filter or heater and you're just gonna be like, ugh, super shy, nocturnal fish, never gonna happen, right? But when I took them home from the store, like, I don't know what's up, but they're constantly swimming around, looking for food even in the front of the tank, even in the daytime, so I'm not sure what's up with that stereotype. Again, maybe I'm just providing a lot of hiding spots and they feel safe. Um, another thing is when I first took them home, they were doing something really, really weird. They were frantically swimming up and down along the sides of the glass and all the way up to the surface. And I'm like, what is going on? Are my water parameters wrong? Well, it turns out I had cycled that aquarium using plants only. So they were one of the first fish in there. And it looks like they were swimming all the way to the top, hooking their bodies on the branches of the frog bit, and then they could use it to just suck up any microorganisms or springtails or little bugs that are at the surface. So it was really cool. So if you sprinkle a floating food, like a flake, uh, onto the surface, they will sometimes dart all the way up to the surface uh, just to eat those floating foods. Really cool. Another pro to this fish is that they are very, very hardy. So this is not my story, but I heard on a YouTube video that Master Breeder Dean had an aquarium that he wanted to take down for some reason. So he drained all the water out, took all the fish, and then kind of like a lot of us, we just get kind of lazy and we don't finish our projects. <laughs> so there's like a little bit of water and all the decor there, and he just never got around to it. Well, fast forward to like a year or so later, he's like, yeah, I really need to do something about this old aquarium. So he starts fishing out the decor and then finds that there's a single remaining coolie lounge that was living in the aquarium the whole time with no heat, no filtration, no food for a year. Yeah, he was still, I guess, living on any microorganisms that were growing in the bottom of the tank. So very cool, obviously very bulletproof and great for beginners. If you want to see more care videos like this one, check out my playlist over here. And a huge thanks to Mark, Caleb, Sheila, and Eddie, sorry, there's a lot of people that joined this week, uh, for becoming supporters recently on Patreon. Thank you so much. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.